Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're gonna to be making this drone. Let's get started. Now we're gonna talk about modeling, how to put something like this together, do some basic materials. And we'll also talk about how to use geometry nodes to set up a little bit of a rig for it so we can have some cool animation. So let's jump into it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my default cube and I'm gonna model out the shape of the top. So I'm gonna go into edit mode. Now I've got this pie mode thing that I can switch uh, modes with, but you can also just come up here. Um, and the default is tab just goes into edit mode. So um, you can change this in the preferences if you want. You can come over here to interface and where's it? Key map and tab for pie menu. I like to use it. All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is block out a basic shape. So I'm just gonna go to face mode and I will grab this back face and I'm gonna hit G and Y. This will grab on the Y. I'm just gonna bring it back and just do a little bit of an elongated body there. Now I'm gonna do a loop cut right around this uh, sort of central area. So I'm gonna hit Control R and just move my mouse over an edge there and you get this, this yellow loop. And you can see if you go to another edge, it flips. So I've got two options here. You can roll your mouse as well to get multiple cuts, but we just went one. We're gonna click here and that commits it. Now we're in this slide mode. I'm gonna just slide up a little bit, uh, maybe to about like this. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this edge and this edge here, and I wanna bring them closer together. So I can actually use the scale for that, but I don't wanna scale on the X. I just wanna scale along the Y. So I'm gonna hit S, Y, and I'll just bring these in. Let's hit Control R again. We're gonna do a loop cut right here, and I'll just slide it back a little bit like this. And then I'm gonna to go to a vertex mode and I'll grab this one and this one. And I might grab all of them if I'm honest. I'll grab all these top ones here and hit S and X just to bring this in a little bit. So there, it's a little more um, concave. Is that, no, a little tapered, that's the word. I'm gonna grab these back ones and hit S, X and push them out a little bit. Pretty cool, so we have this nice separation. I might grab these two and grab Y and bring this forward. And then I'm going to, let's see, what do I want to do with this? I might take the back two and SX and bring them down so it's quite narrow. And it's going to create a nice little break up there in the shape. All right, this is pretty cool. Um, now, I think I want to create like a bit of a lip where like this goes in a bit. So what I could do for this is I'll just grab this face and grab Y and bring it back a little bit like this. And then I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'll just bring it forward and then click to commit. There we go. And now what I can do is I can grab this edge, grab Y and slide it forward to kind of get the right shape. And I'll take this right here and grab Y and just bring it back. I'll go into edit mode and I will go to vertex mode with hitting one on my keyboard. You can also just come up here and click. I'll grab the front two here and S and X. We're gonna bring those in. And I'm just, just trying to break it up, I'm trying to create interesting symmetrical shape. Um, and it's looking pretty cool. We do have some non-planar faces. So that means it's a face that doesn't, it's not like entirely flat. So I should probably uh, triangulate some of these. And we can do that pretty easily by selecting this and we can use the knife tool. Hit K and then click there and then come over here and click there and then hit return on the keyboard and that will cut that. And you can see now these triangles are now like properly oriented. It's no longer like this where it's kind of like hard to see how it actually works or what's going on with the shape. So I'm going to hit K again and I'll do this side. We'll come up here, click there and hit return. There we go. That's better. Uh, how's this back here? Yeah, this one is also weird. So we're going to do this. And hit return and then K, click, click, and return. There we go. That fixes all of our non planar faces. Okay, I'm going to select this edge and this edge, and we're going to bevel these two. So with these two selected, I'm going to hit Control B to bevel, and then I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to get some rounded bevels. And we'll just bring this out a little bit like that, just so that it's not intersecting there. Um, and that's pretty cool. That'll look good. Let's, um, let's put a bevel modifier on this and see what it looks like. I'm gonna go to the modifiers tab, click add modifier, and I'm gonna search for bevel. 
and I'm going to make the bevel segment set to two and I'm going to bring the amount down so it's quite small. And that's just going to add a little bit of a nice rounded edge to these guys. I'm going to go up to three, in fact. And then I can right click and shade smooth and you can see it's still going to look like we've got these nice tight edges. Let's do the arms next because we'll only do one of these and then we can kind of duplicate it around and then we'll be in a good spot. So I'll pick the point where I want to have it attached. So I might just go something like this. And I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh Cube. I'll put a cube right there. Go into edit mode, hit A to select all, and S. We're going to scale it right down. And then 3 to grab faces, and I'm going to grab X. We're just going to go straight out instead of at an angle like they usually are. Um, and we can adjust that once we have it modeled. Pull that out. And then I'm going to go E and come forward a little bit. And then I'll grab the top bit and E and Z. No, e automatically locks you on the Z. So. Um, and I kind of want to make this a bit of a cylindrical shape. So I might control R, loop cut it there, and loop cut it there. And then what we can do is we can grab these faces like this. Or actually, maybe we'll grab these guys. And if we control B to bevel and roll our mouse wheel just to create those cuts. Now it's got this nice rounded look to it. That's pretty cool. Okay, face mode with number three on the keyboard. I'm going to inset, come in like this. Boundary we can keep, doesn't matter for that. And then I'm going to hit E and come down. Scale that in like this. Grab X, bring it back. It's pretty cool. But we do have quite a dense piece of uh, dense edge here. Um, I might dissolve that edge. I don't know if I need it. Let's try it. So let's go, um, we'll just grab it. And there we go. So Alt, click that edge, and then uh, X to delete, then we're going to dissolve edge. Um, now, I want this. So the propeller is going to go right here. So I might create a bit of like a housing for it. So I'll inset in, E down a little bit, inset in, and then E up. And then we might like grab this, Shift S, cursor to selected, Shift A, cylinder, scale it down, grab X, just line that up. We could do the blades um, up on top. So I'll just back to edit mode, grab that top, Shift S, cursor to selected. See how I keep using the cursor? Let's keep placing stuff. And go Shift A, mesh, and we'll grab a cube, scale it right down. Go into edit mode, scale Z, grab Z, scale Z, grab Z. Now it's like a thin little disc plane thing. And I'll grab this one. I will E, come out. And yeah, about that far, I guess. And then I'm going to control R right about here. Scale X, widen it out. And that's pretty cool. And then we also want to have like a little bit of a twist to it. So I might rotate Y there so we get that twist. I'm going to control R and cut right down the middle. Go into transparent mode, vertex mode, and then grab those vertexes and delete them. And then I can use the mirror modifier again on this. And we're going to mirror it on the Y. There we go. Now we got the blades. Now for this, I think what I'll do is I will apply it. So I don't have that hanging around. So now it's just one piece of mesh. And might, let's see, grab these top two and then shift S cursor to selected, shift A and cylinder again. Something like this, I think be good. I'm gonna apply the scale. We've got this weird scale on this. I wanna make sure that doesn't mess up anything. So I'm going to apply scale. And so now you can see it's all ones and that will help make all this work better. All right, so let's go into edit mode. Let's grab all of this. And I'm gonna grab Z, bring it down a little bit. And I'm worried it's a little too long. That might be a bit more appropriate. 
grab this back down. All right, I'm going to parent this to that. So select the blades first, then the arm, control P to parent, and we're going to parent to the object. And I'm also going to grab this shift S cursor to select it. I'm going to set the origin of this object to there. So I'm going to go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, which will put it right there. And I'm going to come forward a little bit. Instead, just line this thing up. It's all right if we intersect. And then I'm going to rotate Z and go out like that. So what we can do is hit Alt S, and that will scale along normals, which does this nice no look. All right, let's duplicate this out. Um, from here, call this arm. Double click it, and I will shift D to duplicate, rotate Z about this. Now we kind of want these blades to be so close that they're almost touching. All right, let's do some materials and let's get these blades to be very bigger. I'm going to select each blade. And then I'm going to switch my pivot to be individual origins. That way they just scale on their own origins. And I can hit S and just bring these up so that they are close to touching. Switch over to rendered mode. There we go. I'm going to turn ray tracing on using Eevee. And then I'm going to jump into my camera using zero on my number keypad. I'm going to lock my camera to view. Get a nice little angle. I'm going to click this little drop down, turn off scene world, and I'm going to use one of the built in HDRIs like this. Turn up world opacity and the blur down. I'm going to get rid of that light and I'm going to go shift A, light, sunlight, and I'm going to set a sunlight kind of a similar angle. All right, cool. Now, with this as our view, we can um, set some material. So, first, I want to come and go with like a dull plastic, like a gray. Plastic look. So I'll come over here. We're just going to bring this down like this. And I don't want it too shiny, so I'm going to bring up that roughness. And for the blades, we'll go for a different material, something really dark. Something like this. Just select these guys, grab the new material, click the little drop down, and copy to select it. And that will Nice. All right, let's put like um, let's put some lights on these guys. And come over here, and Control R, and Control R, and then I'm gonna grab this face, and this face, and then the one in between, like that. I might hit E to extrude just to bring it out a little bit. Control Plus to get that whole area, and then I'm gonna go Plus New Assign. And I'm going to give this uh, emission. So down here, I'm going to take this up to one, maybe even two. Give it like a red hazard light color, which is cool. And we can get those to glow if we switch to our compositor. Click Use Nodes and get the Glare node. Drop this here and set it to Bloom. Turn the threshold down a bit. Uh, oh, sorry. We'll keep it at one, but we need to activate it. So come up here, show the compositor in the camera, and then we'll get these little loomy bits, which is cool. Nice. Last step, we're going to take these arms, and then we'll shift select the body, control P to parent. Call this our drone. And now to animate this, we've got a couple different things we could do. Um, we could just simply have a rotation on these guys. Um, but what might be fun would be to go over to Geometry Nodes, click New to create a new Geometry Node system. And what we could do is we want to spin it, right? So let's take the Transform Geometry Node, and we want to spin on the Z, basically, right? So what we can do is come over here, and let's grab the... Let's see, if I grab Steam Time, we could go with Frame, or even Seconds. And let's um, let's see. I'm going to combine these into an X, Y, Z because this rotation has three values, right? X, Y, Z rotation. So if I take the seconds and plug it into the Z, and then I can plug this into the rotation, that's going to basically mean the seconds are going to drive the rotation. So if I hit play, see it's going to spin. It's cool. But we need to increase this. 
a whole lot. So let's add some math. We're gonna go math. We'll drop this here. We're gonna multiply by 10. Make it 10 times faster. Nice. 20 times faster. Very cool. All right, now let's really get a sense of what this is gonna look like. Let's turn on motion blur. Now this is gonna happen in the viewport, right? So we actually get that nice EV motion blur in the viewport. It's not entirely accurate, but it's definitely good enough for our purposes. Uh, what we can do with this is um, we can kind of create a bit of a switch where we turn it on and off, right? Maybe where it like speeds up or slows down. So um, what we can do with that is let's say we could take this number here and we can plug it into this number there. And now the geometry node system will have this nice little input here. Um, and we should probably put geometry nodes first just for safety and um now we can like keyframe this we can set it to zero right and it's not going to do anything but if we go up a little bit it's going to slowly move pretty cool wow it's going really slow now i guess that's a bad idea we should do it after Anyways. um all right so now what we can do is we can put the same thing on everything so we can call this um blade spin and then I go to this guy and click add modifier geometry nodes and then grab blade spin. And now I can come here, geometry nodes, blade spin. Now they each have a separate value, right? And uh, what we can do is actually to drive them all, um, we could create like a controller for this drone. Like let's, let's say we cursor just selected shift A, let's create a mesh circle. And scale that up, right? So let's say this is the controller that we're going to use to animate this guy around, right? So I can parent this to that. Now this is the thing we're going to grab. So whenever we have this selected, let's say we want to have a controller on this that allows us to animate all the blades together. So we can just keep it all together in one system. So what I could do is come here to this uh, the orange box uh, and create custom properties. And they show up go to the in panel here um, in the item uh, view. So we come down here to custom properties. So with the circle selected, click new. And then we're going to click the little gear and we're going to call this blade spin. And the default value can be one, that's fine. And maximum we want to set like 500 or something. Um, and that should be pretty good. If you're going to link this into another scene, you want to take that so people can actually change it. Give a little description. Click OK, and now we've got this value here, and you can see properties. You've got blade spin right there now, which is quite cool. So now whenever we select this, we'll have that as a property. And we can animate it if we link all these guys. So let's see. Let's take this, and we just create a driver. So um, we can just keep this elevated here, although we probably want them all spinning together. So Maybe we should just get rid of this, right? And yeah, now none of them have the value, which is fine. We can just get rid of that output from the group output there. And then we can come to this. And let's right click on blade spin and go copy as new driver. And then we'll come to the geometry node system, right click and paste driver. Okay. So now they're all going to go the same rate. And we can control it straight from our controller. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned some cool things. If you did hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, check out the Patreon where you can get the uncut version of this tutorial, which runs for like an hour. That's cool. So lots of stuff gets cut out. All my tutorials have an uncut version with a lot of extra stuff. So if you like that, you can get it on Patreon or you can get it on YouTube if you join at the All Access Pass level and higher. And you can get this project file if you join on the higher tiers and Patreon as well. So go check it out if you're interested in supporting this channel. And if you like cool stuff, special thanks to everyone who already supports this channel. Thank you so much. I couldn't be making these videos without you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a fantastic week.